How's it going, everybody? Another ATV mini clip. Mini clip of probably a lot. We're actually uh, going to try a new format here uh, since we're working on this thing. Uh, so today I'm going to show you guys how to wire in a uh, HEI uh, electronic distributor. So what I'm going to do today uh, is get that wire into this fuse box. I'll show you guys how to do it. This is a 1970 Impala. Uh, there's your fuse, pan the fuse panel right there. That's what I'm going to go to. Uh, that's where everything kind of comes in at. And I'll show you guys how to test uh, what one's your live wire. Okay, so what you want to do, I hooked up my battery. I always disconnect it when I'm working this. Don't mind that, that was already loose. Uh, so what you want to do is put your key in your ignition, obviously, and turn it on. Now you take a test light here. This is what I have. And I just grounded it to that dash ground wire. And what you want to do on your fuels panel, you'll see. Uh, let me zoom you guys in here real quick. You'll see uh, battery. You have two battery. You have accessory. See how that lights up if I hold it right. And then you have ignition. Now you want to put it on the ignition one right here. Because what that happens, if you turn, when you turn, you know your lights turn off uh when you turn your key to crank your engine that so this is going to shut off when i go to crank the car so you want it to be on ignition right here so that always stays on as long as the key is on that stays on that's flickering just because i'm not holding it. it's hard to tell um this is also a way to tell if you get a bad fuse i got a bad fuse right there you see this one turns on and this one doesn't there's a break right there uh so what we're going to do is we're going to fish that wire through that hole and uh, we're going to plug it in right here on ignition and that'll keep our distributor powered. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that hole right there. I found, you can see that light shining through it. That goes right to that firewall and is a perfect spot for this wire to go into. So, uh, my car, that's where I'm gonna put it. Okay, you can see that wire poked right through here. And I can just grab it and my reel falls down. Now I'm just gonna take this, put a connector on it and uh, plug it right into there. And uh, she'll be golden. And uh, I just crimped that little fitting. I like to use these fittings here uh, because if it, in case something jostles loose, it won't touch this and create a spark. So this kind of isolates itself inside that little fuse panel there. Uh, now all you do is just uh, plug her on into ignition, just like this. I'll try and get it on camera while holding it. And here it click. She's in there nice and good now and not going to come out. Then you just kind of pull the slack through and make it look, make it look good, make it how you want it. And uh, that's how you get power from here up there. Now I should mention this is 12 gauge wire. Uh, the distributor calls for uh, 12 gauge wire. Uh, you don't want to downsize it. Um, you just want to get 12 gauge wire. I got white. Uh, it really doesn't matter what color you get. I got white because every other wire inside the engine bay is... Uh, red, green, or black. And uh, I figured I'd get this white one. So later on, I know exactly uh, what this wire goes to. So that is the inside part done. Okay, so I got that uh, that wire ran right to that little hole, zip tied it up along the harness, and it comes over here, and then it'll plug in. But I, sorry, I connected that to that solenoid over there. And if you stick this in here when your key's on, you should see that light comes on. So that's how you know you're good to go. So now I'm going to show you guys how to wire it into uh, the distributor cap. Now before we get too carried away here, I got ahead and rigged it up because I don't have any friends. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm oh. here if you want to talk. Siri does that. So you see you turn the ignition on. Now if you go to crank it, see it? I'm not, I'm not holding it, but it stays lit. So that's how you know. You got a good connection there, and that's gonna stay on when you turn the key. Okie doke. So I've set you guys up here in my uh, my engine bay, and I'm just gonna crawl around in here like a frog. And uh, for these ones, you just push down and twist. There are these little latches here. You just push down, twist out, and you'll see those little arms come out. You just do that for these couple ones down here. And they only turn one way out. And they only turn one way out, yeah. So if it's stuck going one way, 
I believe you turn them to the left. That is what all of these are doing right now. Except that one. So now once you got all those out, you can just go ahead and lift her on out of there. Um, make sure you're not tangled in anything, like I am. And out she comes. And I just got confirmation that my, uh, also don't forget to unplug this. Snap that boy off. I think there's one on the other side too, conveniently. Yep. Screwdriver goes in your intake, just see foam it out. Yeah, see foam it out. It'll be good. Come on. Get out of there. There we go. And this proves my little, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the first part, this rotor was all tangled and screwed up. And it is still straight. So that means it's working. <laughs> if you can, let me. Yeah, it should be able to go two times now. That... Let me see. Yeah. Oh, you can see it now. You see how like bent and twisted that is? It's supposed to be a flat piece. It's supposed to be a perfectly flat piece and bend down like right there. But whoever installed this did it completely wrong. I don't know how you even do that, but it was all, you probably saw it in the last part, it was all twisted around and I just kind of flattened it out with my needle nose. And we spun it a little bit and it hasn't twisted itself around again. So I think we'll get away with testing on it the way it is. And then I'll order another one sometime. Sometime. That's why we real zoomed. And uh, I can have that tack inside the dash start working. Um, but. <laughs> Cut! Alright, hope you guys uh, didn't mind that fall there. I'm sure that was uh, exciting. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying is this other wire here, you can see it says uh, tack. Uh, you connect your tack wire to that. I don't know how to do that yet, so I don't really know how to. I'm just setting this up right now so it'll work. Uh, and then this plug right back there that you saw me take off uh, goes right here, and it can only go one way. Uh, what you don't want to do, I mean, you can, is take this wire right here and hook it straight to your battery. That will work, but the only way to shut your car off is to unplug it from the battery. So if you need to really test it, you can hook that wire right here, uh, B plus, so it's bat. You hook that right on there, stick that in your battery on your positive side, and uh, that's how you can test if you have spark. But I'm pretty confident that this is gonna work. That's why I took the time to run it all the way down through there. Um, and when it does work, you already did all that work. So uh, I'm gonna get this set back on here, um, and I'm gonna figure out my timing, and uh, we will I'm not even going to check my timing right now. I'll save that for another video. Uh, I'm just going to plop this back on here and see if we get spark. Uh, so I'll see you guys in two seconds. Okay, so I got that all hooked back on there. All good. I got the spark plug tested right here. Um, and the, there's no plugs in the engine. We're doing this. There's no, no spark plugs in this engine. So um, let me just make sure there isn't anything in the way. Uh, go ahead and crank it. that and that there people is how you uh get that going if you don't so if you like this video give a thumbs up subscribe for more and uh stay tuned for the next video where i show how to uh set your timing on these engines here and uh yeah see you guys later peace